EFF leader Julius Malema joins me in studio to discuss the economy, land and more. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Let's start with this issue of land expropriation without compensation. How do you practically see that working without causing harm to the economy? Well, the state becomes the custodian of the land and um, all of us uh, go to the state to explain what we're going to be using our land for. And if it makes sense to the state, the state allows you to continue using that land for that purpose. So if the land is producing food, you just simply tell the state, here we're producing food, here we're farming cattle, here we're mining, here is, there's an office space, this is what we're using it for. And uh, we guarantee you um, whatever yes that you would be requiring to use the, that particular land for. What kind of rejigging would be need to be done to the state system? Because we've seen that a lot of state implemented actions, uh, such as land reform perhaps, aren't working. Um, well, there was a lack of political will. All you need is a political will. Uh, everything else uh, will work. I don't think that uh, the state is, uh, is not capable to handle the land issue. It's capable to handle anything. The state is actually the biggest institution, bigger than capital itself. And therefore, if land can be run by private sector, what stops the state from running uh, the land? So we think that corrupt free state, the capable state, uh, is well equipped on behalf of the people because we say it's the government of the people by the people to handle uh, the land on behalf of our people. Um, so land <coughs> has been a very big part of our national discourse. Tax at the moment as well is also a very big part. Um, there's been allegations that Carl Phillips, who's a co-director in Carnilix, alongside alleged tobacco smuggler Adriana Mazzotti, is said to have given you a one million rand loan. Um, you also received money from Mazzotti to help start EFF, which you've also said. So can you just clarify where we are on this issue and where we are on this issue of your tax? Because it seems to be back in the public domain. No, my tax is done. Kyle loaned me one million million and uh, it's not a new story I wrote it in the Abidavi to court when SARS wanted to sequestrate me it's not a new discovery it's just that people are reading to it because they are shorter and easy to read I'm not responsible for laziness if people are lazy to read it's none of my business Mazzotti the same thing in 2014 Mazzotti we announced that he donated 200,000 when we were asked to pay 600,000, I was, I was fired from work. I didn't have, have money. Floyd didn't have money. We were forming a party. We called for everybody to come and contribute. Mazodi came with 200,000. We put it on record in public. We didn't hide it so that if people don't appreciate political parties that gets money from uh, cigarette people, they can uh, just not vote the EFF. So we said to the people, this is where the money is come from, from different well-wishers. It's not about Mazzotti donating 200,000. They are very angry that the EFF managed to register. Because at that time, everybody else thought we will not register. Remember, we went to court and we lost the court. We said to the court, you can't make political parties to register to exercise their democratic right. If this government was not requiring money to register political parties, Mazzotti will not have paid the money. So where did they expect us to get the money from? They are disappointed. We are here and we are troubling them. And they are blaming Mazzotti for having contributed that money. But had it not been Mazzotti and all others who donated to uh, register the EFF, will not have EFF in parliament, will still have Zuma as a president. Thanks to Mazzotti and those who helped us to form this organization. It's not a secret. Let's stay with that issue of political uh, party funding. My vote counts uh, recently went to the Constitutional Court and won something that said political parties should disclose who votes for them. As a political party, what kind of a criteria do you have now for who can donate to the EFF? Because, you know, again, there's allegations of uh, that those are proceeds of crime, perhaps. And you've said, you know, if, if this person is involved in crime, he must go to jail. But how do you decide whose money to accept? And then how do people trust um, that the money you're taking is not dirty money? Well, we, you know, to declare money as a proceeds of crime, we can't have any Tom, Dick and Harry moving around the corridors of bathrooms and declare money to be proceeds of crime. It has to be a court. So white supremacy, that's how it works. It equates itself to the court of law, and once it has made judgment about you, it's final. The, this Mazzotti money has never been taken to court and been found guilty to be proceeds of crime. And I'm on record saying, if it was to be declared as proceeds of crime, the EFF will be more than willing to return that money. Anyone can donate money uh, to the EFF, 
the EFF will not accept money knowingly that this proceeds of crime, this is money for corruption and all those type of things. We try by all means to try and ensure that we receive donations from a credible individuals who are not found guilty and who are not doing business with government and who are not engaged in any shenanigans. And that's why we said if Mazoti has done anything wrong, if uh, this uh, lazy guy, uh, uh, Jack Powell, uh, because he's lazy to walk, you can see him physically is challenged. He can bring the evidence to us. We'll take that evidence ourselves to the police and get Mazuti arrested. So in the absence of uh, any form of evidence, we will not entertain any gossip. We support the judgment. Political parties must disclose and let the voters decide uh, if they don't want to vote for parties that get pe money from people like uh, Masoti. But where was the EFF going to get money at that time? You needed brave people who were not scared of the system. Anyone who had donated money to the EFF at that time would have been isolated. Okay, let's move on to more general uh, yep. view now. Elections are coming up next year, and obviously you're going to be uh, trying to win people's vote. The economy, um, we're seeing a deficit of 2.2% in our GDP growth, our unemployment at about 26.7%. What would you say is your plan to grow the economy outside of land? We want the state to own strategic sectors of the economy because we know the state is not driven by wanting to maximize profits. The problem we are faced with now is that even if the economy grows, growth, it doesn't create jobs, that money is not redistributed. Actually, those who are making money out of this economy, they put it in the banks and they don't reinvest it in the economy, they don't uh, open industries because they've got no confidence on this democratic government presided over by black people because those who have the money are white people. So we need the state intervention. That's what happened even in England after World War. The state had to come and own strategic sectors of the economy, revive the economy, and once they were sure now the economy is uh, on its own feet, then allowed private uh, uh, capital to come in and participate, uh, you know, uh, much, much more uh, into the economy. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to consumers and uh, people who are affected by the VAT uh, hikes, the petrol pr uh, price hikes, as well as the food hikes. Last week in your press briefing, you uh, laid the blame for those petrol price hikes on President Cyril Ramaphosa. Take us through what, as a consumer, you feel that should, uh, should be done besides voting next year, which was your solution in the press conference, on a day-to-day -day basis now to cope with all these increases. To my man, I should not have increased the VAT. Because no one sent, he said, send me. No one has sent him to go and increase VAT. He increased VAT, sent by himself. No one sent him there. He should have reduced VAT. We should consider the issues of the levy in the petrol uh, price. So that we, once we reduce the petrol price, uh, once we reduce the VAT, then we know that certain items, uh, especially the basic items that our people need for survival, we should completely take out a uh, vet in, in those uh, uh, products so that the consumer is relieved from these huge burdens uh, and uh, it becomes difficult for them uh, to uh, consume and participate effectively uh, in the economy. So the increase of vet was a miscalculation. And all of this is happening under the over-exaggerated new dawn. Maybe they shouldn't have called it a dawn. They should have called it a Vaseline or something else because it is complete failure. Uh, uh, so I don't understand what is this to be what what is there to be celebrated by these people. Uh, so this over exaggeration, we said at the beginning that people will see the real uh, man behind Cyril Ramaphosa, who's obsessed with corporate, who's obsessed with business, and has got no regard for poor people, especially poor consumers. So, so my question was more focused away from uh, the side of politics and more uh, to say to consumers, what do you suggest that they do now, short of voting next year, which is what your suggestion was, to cope with these increases that you've spoken about? Well, uh, we should try and save and only go for what we really need, uh, not things that uh, are luxurious. We should try by all means to save money and uh, let every cent count. Uh, because we are living in very difficult times and uh, we, are, we can only hope and rely on 2019. Uh, maybe things will change uh, uh, for the better. But for now, we have to really spend our money 
on what we really need and not things that uh, we seek to impress others, uh, even if we don't need them. Mm. Do you think that um, in this discourse that we have around politics, uh, around money, I know that your party particularly gets called out a lot uh, by certain people in the media for the cars you allegedly drive or the shoes you already drive. Mm. Do you think that discourse is uh, just attacking people or do you think there is, there is a sense that perhaps there needs to be a look at the image that you put out as a politician versus what you're saying, or is that quite a low bar of no, thinking? No, our people are not fools, man. Um, our people know uh, their politicians. They know us. They know what we do. We live with them. We live amongst them. They know what we drive. They know where we stay. We never said anywhere in our manifesto, elect us into parliament, we'll stay in Alexander. So our people know. They elected us knowing that our houses were taken in Santin. They still elected us to parliament. So it's not like we're misleading them and telling them that uh, uh, we stay in uh, Elias Mutsualedi in, in, in Cape Town. No, they know uh, who, who, who we exist for. But uh, uh, those that can't find fault in your argument and uh, in your narrative, they start degenerating to be looking at your earrings and say your earrings are too shiny, therefore they're expensive. Uh, it, that's a de degeneration. Uh, we cannot have an intellectual debate uh, looking at who's dressed what. I've always said I can have Tokyo Sohale as my president. I have now a billionaire as my president. Um, uh, I can have Patrice as my president. What matters to me is political will, is whether they've got the will and the heart to change the things for the better, particularly for poor people. It's not about what they drive. I don't care where they stay. As long as they will change the lives of our people. Mm -hmm. So when you call the EFF about the shoes uh, they wear, uh, it's a demonstration of, 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 of degeneration. Because we have a billionaire as a president. Nelson Mandela stayed in Houghton. You never said people must not elect Nelson Mandela because he stays in Houghton. Nelson Mandela did not cease to be a hero because he stayed in Houghton. So really, these levels of degeneration just show you the type of people we are engaged with. We're not worried about pettiness. Mm -hmm. Jiba and Advocate Lawrence Mpwebi has just been announced uh, in court a short while ago that they're not going to be struck from the advocate's role. Before we go, uh, your views on that? Well, uh, the court has made a decision. I, I've, I've always made a call. You know, I spoke on Tom Moyani. I said, let's not make potential facts heroes by how we treat them. Look at what we did to Duduzani. Today, Duduzani uh, is a, it's a hero uh, because of how he was handled in court. Our people, South Africans particularly, sympathize with those who appear to be victims. Never uh, attack uh, potential thugs in a manner that you will turn them into heroes. Let us only go for them if we've got a case uh, against them. There is difference between uh, politics and a, a, a case because there you have to go prove beyond reasonable doubt and and Malema makes noise Malema makes noise then the NPA wants to uh, jump and act even when they don't have the facts so let's separate the two we will continue to make noise particularly when we suspect there's something wrong uh, in a particular you know office or department but the Hawks and NPA they must not play to the gallery even when we make noise they must go and get the facts and even when they get the facts, let them treat people fairly. Because the inability to treat people fairly, you'll turn them into heroes and you'll have yourself to blame. Thanks so much for your time. Julius Malema, leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters, joining us in studio there. That's a wrap from us as we have your weather after the break. Goodbye.